Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to the Scottish Rugby Podcast, brought to you by the Scottish Rugby Blog. Uh, I am Cami Black. It's our um, Scotland, South Africa, and Scotland, Japan preview podcasts. Um, we uh, might be a little bit late on the Scotland, Japan preview because um, we've we've scheduled this for one o'clock on a Friday, hoping that the um, women's team will have been announced by now, but it hasn't. So we're going to we're going to park that to the end of the podcast. If during this podcast that team's announced then we can go into more detail if not we, we can do a little general preview um scotland south africa then john we've got the scotland team um it's fair to say there was a few surprises in there uh yeah i think that would be that that, that would be a fair suggestion um it was again why do, why do we even try to predict townsend anymore why do we think we can do this we can't he's uh he's mercurial yeah, <laughs> it, I think that's. It, and it's you not threw like, that word around an awful lot, John. I tell I'm, you. Uh, do you know I'm 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 taking that word back because all of those folks <laughs> that have all those journalists that have claimed it and used it. For, I'm I'm taking it back. This is my new mercurial. That I'm taking back the M word. Um. Yeah. It's great. It's a strange one, Craig, because I don't think any. I don't think there's been any any news that any of these are particularly injury forced. I think that we're guessing the Sam Johnson one is, but they haven't said it is. So no. that would indicate that the plan has always been for Matt Scott to play at twelve, which seems I don't know like to. There's obviously a plan there. There has to be, and uh, you know, it's either that you know, it's either injury and they're just keeping it quiet, or um, or because because you know, if I, if you showed me that twelve months ago. I may have said, well, you know, they're bringing Matt Scott in at 12 because he's a strike runner and he's heavy, you know, and he's a, he's a lot stronger than Sam Johnson and this, that, and the other. But actually, well, considering he just he sparked out a, um, uh, <laughs> an Australian prop um, uh, in, in the last game, you know, he's not lacking in, um, in, in strike running ability. So it, there's not a lot I can really say apart from the fact that Matt Scott is ripping it up and... We obviously needed um, some stronger players in the line out, so uh, in the line uh, in the lineup. So we thought we'd bring in some ex Edinburgh or Edinburgh players for that. You know? <laughs> oh, John, Cam- John, Cam- I'll let you. Cam- I'll let you respond. I'll let you respond <laughs> in time, John. <laughs> what, what I will say though is we had, we did have a debate in the group chat about this when it when it came out, and obviously you know Rory, um, you know, editor of the blog, is is absolutely delighted that that Matt Scott's. Um, in the in the squad, he's been calling for it for a long time. I think Matt Scott is unlucky that he he went to Gloucester, had a a bit of a renaissance down in Gloucester, came up to Edinburgh, did very well, and has now gone to Leicester, and by all accounts is doing incredibly well. The problem that Matt Scott has had is when he went to Gloucester, Scotland all of a sudden got a load of options at centre, so mm-hmm. he went down the pecking order, not for a lack of ability, and he's come back to Edinburgh really pushed his way in but he was he was pushing against the closed door I think because we just had so many different options now I think it's you know who just you know if Sam Johnson is injured then actually Matt Scott's not not a bad option and maybe that's testament to him John and I'm going to make you say something nice for Matt Scott it's testament to Matt Scott that he <laughs> you know that, that he's in there that he's worked he has he has played his way back in to the Scotland starting lineup, I think you're you're absolutely right. It is testament to Matt Scott that he's um, persevered because uh, he has been in a few squads and hasn't got much game time. And the question has always been, why is Matt not Matt Scott not getting a chance? Uh, and I, I think right. So I had my initial um, toys with the pram moment, and then I read read some of the pressers and stuff. And do you know what? Yeah, the Autumn Internationals, okay. Fine. Let's, if he is going to feature at all for Scotland in the run-up, Six Nations, up to World Cup, then, yeah, this is a massive opportunity. And I think it is last chance alone for him. Um, I think if you don't see much from him, then I think he'll probably be put out to pasture a wee bit at that point. I would argue, I take your point regarding the depth at centre, but actually the depth at centre was at 13 
Uh, and Matt Scott's always kind of been considered to be able to play both. Uh, and I do wonder if there has been a little bit of a shift in mentality from him to say more, like, I'll consider myself more of a 12 than a 13. Because Scotland maybe haven't been as stacked at 12. You know, we were relying on Pete Horn there for a long time. Um, Sam Johnson kind of came out of, you know, he, he sort of qualified on residency and we all went, oh, all right, oh, okay, I suppose I'll give him a shot. Um, and, you know, we, we have... We have had a lot of depth at thirteen, so I think you know. I th- right, I've I've got no problem with Matt Scott running at twelve. We'll see what we get out of him. I don't necessarily think if it is a tactical switch, it's a smart one. But I think Sam Johnson has been rumoured to be carrying a few niggles and knocks here and there, and has played a lot of rugby this season already. So you know, yeah, let's let's see how we go. I'm I've yeah, come down. The, Craig, the, um, the, the Gregor Townsend's quote seemed to be indicate that Matt, Matt Scott's in there because he, he maybe is, is a stronger link player, that that's the role he's been playing at Leicester, that his distribution's good, his kick chase is good. Um, <laughs> he's maybe less of a... Although he, he's got the ability to be a direct runner, but he's got maybe a little bit more to his game. The, the quote also kind of said, we're throwing him in there to see what happens and hopefully it'll, it'll go well, which seems a very Gregor Townsend approach to selecting a squad. Yeah, I think I think it's, it's an interesting one because I think... I think... Everyone seems to be that you know the the all the pundits, all the Twitterati um, are seem to be going off on one about about the changes that have been made. But if you actually think about it, remember it's an autumn international. It's not you know okay, it's the world champions that are coming up, and it's going to be a a massive force. It's going to be a inter- really interesting game. We've not you know we're, we're wanting to beat them, etc. But also, it's there's we're not going to win anything out of this. So. If we if Matt Scott's knocking on the door and he throws him in to let Matt Scott have a go, then that's great. The other the other person that is going to that is um, obviously um, uh, is obviously um, winning at this is, is is Rufus McLean. He's getting these chances as well against the world champions. Now, don't get me wrong, he deserves it, but he's getting a chance, and I think that's uh, the other thing to think about. You know. Yeah, ahead of Darcy as well, John, which is, again, we don't know whether there's an indication Darcy's picked up a, a niggle. This just seems to be Darcy had his chance against Australia and Rufus is getting his chance against against South Africa. Yeah, I, I yeah. Um, again, there had there had been some mutterings of potential injury. Darcy has taken a... He's had a rough couple of weeks, hasn't he? Um, <laughs> he's been battered about a bit, but um, no indication of injury. So you have to then, then presume it was... It's it's a plan. You would maybe argue South African South African game plan at a at a best guess will involve the ball being up in the air a lot more. Um perhaps, you know, Rufus McLean slightly taller, but not again, you wouldn't call him an aerial specialist by any stretch. Um so su- I was surprised, but I'm I'm pleasantly surprised. I'm looking forward to seeing how he goes and uh, this could be a real coming of age game for Rufus McLean if he if he goes well uh at the weekend I reckon you're starting to see him very 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 hard pressed to not be asking questions of the first team and uh and getting a game regularly because he's uh he's got all the talent. I suppose Ingrid, the the interesting thing then is that if we've got the forwards that um We've got Nick Haney coming in at six, and Hamish Watson. I don't want to say dropping to the bench because I don't think that's like in modern rugby. The you know you've you've got your twenty three players and that's your team. It's not necessarily the starting fifteen, but it, it would indicate that Scotland are going to try and front up to South Africa with they're having a larger with having a bigger pack. I don't want to say people have pulled me up because I said you know they bring on more mobile players afterwards. I didn't mean. All, I think all I was kind of meaning was that that clearly it's a bigger pack we're starting with. Not that Hamish Watson's lightweight, but the plan then is to bring Hamish Watson on to wreak havoc when the game's breaking up. One with his carrying, and also just to kind of try and compete for the ball at the breakdown. Is that it? It's it. You know, I don't know. If we we've. Um, it's an interesting back row, I think. Yeah, I think I think Tony's gone to the uh, the old school six again, um, and he's put some some big lump in at six. Uh, and no disrespect to Nicky, and I'm not meaning that in the wrong way, but. They put they're bringing him in. They they also he also gives, you know, you've now got uh, Jamie Ritchie, Nick Heenan, Grant Gilchrist, Sam Skinner, who can all be lifted in the lineout. 
Um, yeah. And they're all tall lads, you know, because you're you're looking at the <laughs> some monsters in the in the line out. Um, uh, especially when you look at the the, the, uh, the team that was announced. Um, so I think I think I'm not surprised by it. Yes, okay, Mish is, you know. Uh, the Six Nations player of the championship. He's a British and Irish line, etc. But you play the team th- to the plan that you have, and uh, obviously Nick Haining is there. I, I kind of would have pre- probably have preferred to seen Hodgson uh, go into second row and maybe put Sam Skinner in at six, um, and then you've got the ability to replace a second rower with Sam Skinner if need be. But um, there's obviously a plan, so they're happy yeah. to go. Yeah. I guess because I was working that through, and I think we were working that through in the group chat, and I think, John, yeah. that that means that effectively you're asking all your locks then to play a full 80 minutes, and that's maybe why Haining comes in at six rather than Skinner, because if Hodgson starts, Skinner's in the back row, then you end up with, you either have to stick another lock on the bench or another back rower. In which case, who you know, you, you kind of it's a bit piecemeal, I suppose. If 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 injuries start to, yeah, yeah, it is, it is. And I, I, you know, I like you, Craig. I, I here we go. This is one for the fans here. I originally agreed with your point regarding Skinner. And I certainly would have preferred him uh, to be at six rather than Haining. But actually, you know, when you walk through the logic, it's fair enough. I think the concern for me. Um, there's, there's, again, there's been whisperings about Hamish Watson's fitness. He's not played, you know, he hadn't played any rugby until coming back and um, had to, seemed to have taken quite a knock as well at the weekend, was was hobbling about a bit. And there was kind of suggestions that it was a case of, well, we'll, we'll bring him on at 60 and we'll let him loose, but he's probably not fit for, for you know, to start. And your concern is, and I always reflect back on the, I think it was the Wales game, Six Nations a few years ago, we had Hamish Watson and John Hardy competing for the for the seven jersey. And there was, Hardy was just back from, from injury. Uh, and everyone was shocked that he started. And actually the logic was, look, start. And if you break yourself within three minutes, right, the game plan's shifted, but we're going to have to ask, ask a boy to play the full game when they probably wouldn't have. But, we're you know we're not any worse off whereas the other way about it it you know it's a problem because he could have come on as a sub and broke himself within a minute. So my concern would be you know just if, if Watson isn't fit I would I would always say if a player's kind of struggling with injury or isn't fit to play the full match, start them and get as much out of them as you can before they you know to mitigate that risk. But um but obviously there's game plan with Hamish Watson because in in Townsend we trust. Yeah. The um again and the, the Townsend's talked a little bit about the game plan and there does seem to be an indication, Craig, that the you know Scotland are going to try be in it for the first sixty minutes, mm-hmm. and then the game plan is to then unleash hell by bringing on George Horn, and Adam Hastings, and presumably shifting Finn Russell out to twelve, and getting full cats at a rave. Well, that that seems to be the way. Well, it seems to be the way. I think I think if you're looking at the um the forwards pack etc I think it seems to be that they're going to try and instead of matching South Africa fully across the 15 they're going to try and match and 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 play South Africa with their pack and then um absolutely go for it in the back line um and uh, I think yeah just as you say if cats and the will be on on the field they've got to be on the field at some point um he's had them on on the field against Australia you may as well bring them out against South Africa especially with Yanti's the, the Yanti's brothers uh are they are they the brothers um no they're, uh, not, they're, not, related, they're not brothers actually. no they're not related um but uh at nine and ten um you know you uh, Elton is a he's a good player, but he he can be um, a little bit fragile as such, and and so if he's getting a lot of um, pressure from Matt Scott and from um, uh, uh, from Finn etc., then you know we once we bring on the the, the runners and the kickers um, in the last twenty minutes, you know you might you might find we've got an advantage. Yeah. Um, somebody asking on Facebook, they've not told us who, who it is because they've not given Facebook permission, but have said, do you think Shui and Xander are going to be kept on for 65 plus? I think that's an interesting question. I don't, I mean, I don't particularly feel, I mean, against Australia, the scrum didn't 
I think it was like terrible once, but I think, you know, Jamie Batty and Ollie Kebble did a good, good enough job. I know it's South Africa. And I know they've got a really good bench when it comes to the front row, but I think you just, we'll just see how, how they go really. I mean, you win something, you lose something with bringing your pack off the bench, but I think because South Africa's bench is so strong, all the more re- all, it's all the more likely that you would probably be looking to as they bench, we bench mm-hmm. match because you know with best you know unless unless it's in <laughs> unless the 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 stats are all saying that Schumann and uh, Xander are scrummaging harder and stronger after 65 minutes than Kebel and Batty, which I would highly doubt, whilst they are better scrummagers, I would highly doubt that after 65 minutes against South Africa, they would be able to scrummage as well as a fresh pair of legs from from, from they two. So I think you would, you'll would you see it'll be when South Africa go, we go, but it'll not be before then. Yeah. Yeah, you've also got to look at the fact that, you know, you look how many scrums we had against uh, against. Um... Uh, Australia, and I think the game plan is to is to not they might not be using the scrums um, as much as they uh, as as maybe they used to. Um, so you might find that that, that they'll try and uh, outplay the scrums by you know fifty twenty twos and stuff like that, and you know we'll wait and see. Yeah, um, yeah. I just want to do that very quickly. Um, it is Ian Wallace who says he's uh, CEO of the King Blair Horn Fan Club. Um, that's the one thing I think on the bench. Now I'm controversial, and I know I've been in trouble from, you know, Craig and others about the uh, King Blair Horn not, not, not used before. I'm not. Scotland have left players on the bench before, and I wonder whether or not he's there as a break glass in case of emergency sub because he can because he can cover so many roles because he can cover the back you can cover wing back three and and 10 and possibly 13 according to Gregor Townsend as well but I do part of me does wonder whether or not I'm not sure we'll see him at the weekend unless he's needed and that's not been unusual Craig for Scotland to do that in the past yeah um, I've seen George Horn sit on the bench um, for a whole game um and uh, you know and as frustrating as it may be um that's the way it sometimes that sometimes plays out um it, it, it's di- it's dif- difficult it depends i'm going to say this and i know you'll shoot me down john but if if rufus if the occasion overtakes rufus mclean then he's got some he's got he's got someone who has been who's a, a well capped player for scotland an international player who can come on and you know i don't think it'll happen but it you know, if it, it, if it, it is, could if it happen, happen, and that, yeah. you're not wrong. I'm not yeah. going to shoot you down for that. I don't think it will happen, but it could happen. <clears throat> it could happen, and then there's also the other side of things. Of um, Hoggy's not been lighting my fire lately, so you know, you ne- and and I'm not saying that that Blair Kinghorn is is anywhere. You know, I'm not saying he's a he's a direct Hoggy replacement, but what you might find is that. Um, uh, He's got the abilities that he can come on fifteen if if Hoggy just keeps running into trouble, um, and he, he'll, he, I like the fact that Blair Kingon has the ability to get his hands and the ball around a player, whereas I don't I find Hoggy doesn't when he goes into contact he goes into contact and a lot of the times he gets he gets himself caught um, and the ball's turned over because he's he's such a he doesn't he doesn't take players with him. Um, whereas yeah. Blair Kinghorn has that ability to to go into the contact and get the ball offloaded. Sometimes maybe not the greatest offload, and Hamish Watson will tell you that. Um, but uh, we'll attest to that. But you know, I think, is... and we, um, yeah, and we've talked about that on the podcast before. That, that there's a lot of, you know, Stuart Hogg. I think will occasionally try and overplay things. Yeah, and I think because he's got faith in his own ability, which is great. And I'm not saying that Blair Kinghorn doesn't have faith in his own ability, but I think because he's not the same stature as Stuart Hogg, he maybe is more open to passing or you know, not just running into yeah. contact and hoping he can step a couple of guys and get through them. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we'll see how that goes. There's not just... a chance in hell they're going to take Stuart Hogg off at any point during the South Africa game, yeah. unless it's injury-forced. Let's be honest. He's the captain. is the the best player, except Finn Speaking... Russell is. Speaking of captains, though, it's really important, I think, to see how the game's managed this weekend because yeah. we know with South Africa, we know so against the Lions, we've seen against other teams that if South Africa are allowed to have lots of water breaks, and that's not about water cars coming on the pitch, but just if they're allowed <laughs> to have lots of rests and lots of set pieces, 
South Africa are going to win the game, but if Scotland can keep the ball moving, can keep the pace up, can manage the referee to do that and have, when there are, you know, set pieces and the, there are breakdowns that there's not too many and that the things are moved on quickly. Craig, I'll go with you on that. <laughs> I, it's, it's, it's going to be difficult. I, 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 um, with the captains, Hoggy, Hoggy, the problem we have, and I keep saying, I, I've never really been a big fan of a 15 as a captain. Um, and so I like, I, I like, a, yeah, okay, I'm a forward. So I like a forward captain. So um, I've always been a forward. I do believe, and I'm backing uh, Jamie Ritchie. I like the, the cut of Jamie's, Jamie Ritchie's um, jib. Um, he really has developed a lot of play, a lot of, we had a fair bit of chat about Jamie Ritchie being, he, he, you know, oh, you have to watch him because he's got quite a, quite a bit of niggle. He's got this, that, and the other. I've I've seen a different Jamie Ritchie over the last couple of games. Um, he's still got the oomph. He's still got the, the you know the 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 uh, in your face, but he's just not that in your face. He's not losing it yeah. as much. Um, so I think. Um, Oh, I don't know. It's, uh, Hoggy's captain. Hoggy will continue to be captain. But um, as I said before in the pod last week, I, I, I would uh, be quite interesting to see if uh, Jamie Ritchie becomes captain for the World Cup, even though Ian disagrees with him. Yeah. Um, the um, I think we're seeing the expectation. We were talking about expectations again in the group chat, and obviously, I think you know we need to raise our expectations for this game. I think before, as Scotland fans would maybe expect, you know, one big we beat one big team every couple of years, but I think now the expectations are we should be competing with the big teams every autumn. And my expectation, John, for this game is we should be we should finish within a score, one way or the other. I mean, I think I think that's a fair expectation based on where we are. Um, initially, my reaction was different, uh, and I'm still quite worried. Actually, I think. Uh, I think the game plan's a risk, right? The way the way we've set ourselves up is a risk. Um, I think there's a couple of key positions that might we might get overwhelmed quite quickly in, and if that happens, South Africa could and probably should run away from us, and it could be a two score game quite easily. Um, I'm obviously hoping that doesn't happen, but I've just got a really I've got that horrible niggling feeling. You know, we've had the, the horrible optimism that we've had uh, over the last while uh, and, and and all that comes with that. And now I've got that kind of gut feeling that, yeah, I just, I think, uh, yeah, I think South Africa are going to win. I think they're going to, we're going to end up with our bubble popped a wee bit here. Craig, are you any more optimistic? Um, I think it's going to be a score. I think it's going to be a Scotland score. Um, I think having Matt Scott, he's not the be all and end all with the defence, but I think um, our defence is far better than it used to be. Um, and I think uh, if we can, if we, if Tooney can play what he want, what I can guarantee he wanted to play with the light against them in the Lions series, um, and we can search for the space, we can we can push them with the kicks because we've got a fair, you know, we've got. Three or four kickers on the on uh, in the back line that can can really test the, the box. Um, I honestly think we've got an opportunity to sco- to to at least beat them by a score. I'm fairly positive about it. Um, yeah. So I, I would I would go to go down, I would go down the route of a Scotland win. Yeah, I'm 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 with you, Craig. I'm expecting Scotland to win. I'm not as pessimistic as I used to be about Scotland's chances. I think it's the the way that the team celebrated at the weekend. I think I, I sent a message through to you on the. Pod yeah, we, men- we mentioned that in the pod as well. But... Uh, you know, it's not. It wasn't. You know, it wasn't sinking to the knees, screaming tears. Then the final. Hugh Ashman was obviously emotional because it's his debut. But yeah. it was really working like, "Well done, lads. We've been Australia. Want the next game?" Kind of attitude, which I think so, that's a massive mindset change in Scotland. So I think our defence has come on leaps and bounds. It's going to be a real test for Scotland because it's a. It's not the best South Africa team, but it's it's a really good one compared to the Australia team. Yeah. It's not the South yeah. Africa B by any stretch. It's like in a, they are a South Africa with a couple of key people missing, as yeah. opposed to Australia, who I think were, you know missed quite a lot of key positions. This is a real test for Scotland and see where they are. Um, the, we, we have got the Scotland women's squad, just very briefly. Um, incredibly strong lineup. We've got uh, Leah Bartlett, Lana Skeldon, Christine 
Belzale, uh, Emma Wassell, Sarah Bonner, Rachel Malcolm, Rachel McClellan, Jade Conkel, Jenny Maxwell, Helen Nelson, Megan Gaffney, Lisa Thompson, Hannah Smith, Rona Lloyd and Crowley, Chloe Rowley. Uh, I think it's safe to say that Brian Eason is not effing about with this one. <laughs> um, Craig, I mean, Japan got, you know, well beaten by Wales. It was last weekend. Um, yeah. Last time they played Scotland, it was 24-20 to Japan at Scotston in front of an empty stadium. And this is... Uh, you know, it's interesting because Scotland have been together now for a while now. They've had yeah. that time in the World Cup qualifier and the, they've spent a lot of time in camp together. So this is going to be a really interesting test of where Scotland women are because, I mean, Japan the 12th in the world, I think, and they've got, they're very ambitious as a nation for women's rugby, I think, and rugby in general. So this is a really good test for Scotland, I think, because they can compare, I suppose they can compare to how Wales have played against, they've got something to compa- compare against with how Wales performed against Japan. Yeah, yeah, I would. Uh, looking at the squad that you just read out, um, and and this is an ideal opportunity to to have a feel good a feel good game, um, score some points, score some nice tries, and really push Japan hard. Japan will have a little bit of insider knowledge because they've now got Louise Dalglish um, as their assistant coach, um, who. Uh, was involved with Scotland and and and, and obviously. She's gone over there to uh, to to advance her coaching career, and, and it's a great move for her. But um, uh, so Scott, she, you know, she knows the players very very well. So it'll be interesting to see how Japan front up against uh, against the Scotland players. Um, but I would expect a win um, and a good win yeah. from Scotland. Yeah, John, you agree with that? Good win for Scotland. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's funny, just the difference that uh, seeing a selection makes, and just you know, seeing that consistency, seeing. Uh, you know, if you're playing teams, uh, picking your best players tends to be a good way to win games. So I really, really hope that, uh, yeah, I, I can see them doing really well. Good. I'd like to spend more time on that, but we're literally, I've just literally looked at my phone and the, t- the team have been announced for 10 literally minutes past 12. Popped up. <laughs> popped up, so I don't have more time to kind of do, do much more reading other than see how Japan had done recently. So we'll cover that, though, on the podcast on Wednesday. We'll, we'll, we'll Obviously, that's going to be live on BBC Alba. If you want, I think still tickets are left for the damn stadium. Um if you want there to go do that, I think it's a panel for kids um, as well, which is obviously a very good deal. Um, so we'll be back on Wednesday with the review of the South Africa game, and we will have a review of the Scotland v Japan as well. Um, I am rapidly running out of battery here, so I don't want to be cut <laughs> off unnecessarily and just leave Craig hanging because we've already lost John Anderson. He's already lost um, John, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think that's it for this week. Um, like I said, you can, uh, John's back. Um, you can listen to the podcast on uh, Spotify, Acast. Um, Apple Podcasts, anywhere else you get your podcast apps. We're going to do these little preview podcasts during the um, the autumn tests. And um, you can also sign up to the Patreon, patreon.com slash Scottish Rugby Podcast. You get an extra weekly podcast where we talk about wider issues other than Scottish Rugby and go on for about another hour <laughs> from the normal podcast, which people <laughs> seem to enjoy. So that's £3 a month if you want to sign up for that as well. But for the moment, it is goodbye from me and goodbye from John and Craig. Bye, Bye folks. Um...